Hey, we're back, and it's Intermediate ASP.NET Core 1.0. I'm Scott Hanselman. I'm Jeff Fritz. And uh, we have moving our way forward to uh, different sections of ASP.NET. We talked a little bit about tag helpers, and right now, let's talk about authentication. That's different from authorization, yes. isn't it? Yes, they call it auth-auth, right? Yeah. Authentication and authorization. Um, there's some things that are built into ASP.NET identity out of the box. So if we take a look here in my machine and I say file new project and I pick a core application by default and we hit OK, you see the options on the left there for empty and web API and web application, but don't forget this button where it says change authentication. By default it says no auth. That's the way I normally roll. Right, no. just no auth. Everybody gets it. Anonymous for everyone. If you click on individual user accounts, you'll store user profiles in a SQL database. You can also plug into Active Directory or Office 365, or you can use kind of Windows or classic NTLM uh, authentication for intranet applications. I'm going to click individual user accounts. All right, I did that before, so I'll switch over to the one that I did that on. And you're going to get an MVC application that's got a little bit more going on than typical, right? You don't just have controllers, but you've got an account controller and a managed controller, as yeah. in addition to the home one that we saw before. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're also going to have some database migrations for the uh, the database. We'll talk about those when we get to Entity Framework, but rest assured, there is one there. Then there is the view models. We talked a little bit about view models in our first day. Uh, the view models represent the, 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 the information that is being displayed when you log in or when you forget your password or when you need to send a code for two-factor authentication. It, it's being massaged from the database to include that extra information that you want to display that's not necessarily all coming from one table. Exactly. When, if the database happens to look exactly like the view, you might bring that over, but more often than not, it doesn't. Yeah. So these objects hold that model as it goes up to the view. Excellent. And then here under services, Theoretically, our application could send email to forgot your password yep. or send a text message. Those messaging services are encapsulated within those interfaces. We've got our home about stuff that we saw before, but we've also got managed logins and all those kinds of things. Now, we saw tag helpers, but it is worthwhile to kind of go and look at what a fairly sophisticated looking uh, page looks like. And it is a mixture of logic and Tag helpers. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at the form element now, and that one's in purple, and I'm I'm seeing now that that similar ASP action type of thing that we saw on mm -hmm. on the anchor tag, and now it's an attribute here, pointing to where I I'm guessing we're going to post that form back to. Right. So here we're going to go and talk to the manage controller, calling remove login. We've set it up as a post, and then we're going to post this form back to that controller only if this particular bit of information in the view data is seen. Okay, let's take a look at what this looks like first. All right, so we'll hit Control F5, and we'll run our application. I like to hit Control F5 rather than F5 because I find that it, uh, it's faster than debugging. It is? Mm -hmm. Do you do that? No, I, I like having the debugger attached. I'm. I guess I'm a little more insecure in my coding, and I yeah, want to. I want that debugger there so that I can reach in and sure, sure. hit that intermediate window and start testing things or bring up my watches mm -hmm. immediately. Well, so speaking of debugging, here's an interesting thing. I like personally when we're doing virtual academies and things like this that if a mistake happens or if something goes wrong, I like to uh, keep rolling. Sure. So take a look at this. I hit Control F5 to launch things, and it launches up into this. 4435 at some high port, right? Right. And it's not loading. Mm -hmm. So, of course, uh, the what do they say the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over. Over and over again. So hit F5. Yeah. Well, nothing's going to happen uh -oh. because it's obviously not working, right? Yeah. Now, I can come down here to IIS Express though, all right, and find out what port it's on. Well, it's on 61821, totally different port. Yeah. Okay. So we talked a little bit about this before, but it's an important reminder that the thing that controls the server's port is different from the thing that launches the browser. Yeah. So I have to go into launch settings here and make sure that I'm doing the right thing. My application URL 
and my what URL I'm listening on mm. are a little bit different. What I want to do is remember, have I turned on SSL or not? You can actually enable SSL locally. And then have I done anything to my application to always have it talking over SSL? And in fact, uh, a little bit earlier, as I recall, I did something like that. But what I'm going to do is turn on SSL here, and you'll notice there is a insecure and a secure port. And there's that port number we're right? looking for. Yeah. And there's that port number. Now, when I click that and hit save and then go and run that, uh, Visual Studio may say, would you like us to trust this, uh, this self-signed certificate? Yeah. Now, I'm doing this under SSL because when I want to do my development, I want to... Um, uh, I'm going to be I'm going to be po po posting you know secure passwords and stuff around. So I want to do it even over kind of fake SSL, if you know what I mean. Right. We want to we want to imitate as close to communicating across the internet as possible. Mm -hmm. So this is still not working. So it's four four three five five. So I'm going to go and confirm. I think that number is wrong. Yeah. Four four three two one. The launch settings file controls what gets launched per. Okay. And then here's your app URL and here's your SSL port. If you mess with your port numbers manually, as I tended to, you can get those out of sync and you can get yourself in the situation that we just got ourselves into. So now let's give it a try. Go and run our application on the right port and it works. Now to be clear, this is an SSL certificate but if we look at this certificate, it's localhost. It's yeah. a trusted certificate that I generated and consciously trusted. It is not a good thing. It's just there because uh, we want to do some testing. And additionally, when you do external logins, they don't like to post back to insecure locations. So if yeah. you're going to try Facebook or Twitter login, they don't like to redirect back to localhost without SSL. Right. Mm -hmm. the the local host stuff there, you're not going to go out to production with this. You are going to have to engage and get a real SSL certificate. Absolutely. So here I can go and put in uh, a name and password and do local authentication. So I'm going to go and register this locally, log in, and you'll notice that it says cannot open this database. I think this is the coolest new little white screen error page that is in ASP.NET Core. Yeah, yeah. This is it's really It's not the neat. yellow screen of death. No. It's the calming light blue screen of death. It's, you know what? Something's wrong here, but let me help you fix it. Yeah. So here, it's saying, well, there's no identity schema. So it's saying that the database has not yet been updated. And it's letting me know that I could potentially do that here. Or I could click Apply Migrations, and it will try to do it for me. So the error page is trying to fix this problem. It may or may not work, but we'll find out. Typically, this can be a two-step process. So here it says, I did the migrations, refresh the page, and then I could come back and do that again. But did it create everything it needed to? Oops, make sure that that's correct. My password skills are well-known and epic. Oh, for crying out loud. That's an example of good validation. Oh, very good validation, yeah, yeah. but uh, all of the security <laughs> checks for your it's, password it's slowing, are enabled. It's slowing me down. There we go. There you go. So now... Now, the, w to be clear, those security checks are by default defined mm -hmm. there in our account controller. That's and a great point. You can change those to meet your needs mm. appropriately for your environment if you're managing your own users. Right. So we're building on top of this identity user. We can actually log in to, where's our login page? Account, login. You can see all of this. Again, you don't want to roll your own crypto, as they say, but you can certainly decide what your password um, uh, complexity requirements are Yep. and yep. Uh, all that kind of stuff. So you have control over that. Now, look down here. It says, use another service to log in. All right? And then it says, get external authentication schemes. 
Meaning, I want to log in with Facebook. I want to log in with Twitter, or I want to log in with you know whatever. And you know what, Facebook, I think, is being able to log in with Facebook to another application is so valuable because there are people like like I, I talk about my parents or my mother in law mm -hmm. who they have their Facebook IDs. They want to be able to just get into that next application without having to go create another user ID and yep, password. Yep, absolutely. Uh, actually, we made an acronym: non gender specific, non technical parent. Okay. And uh, I, I've, my, you know, my parents are like that as well. And if my dad can log in with Facebook, then he's happy. Yeah. Yeah. So on the right-hand side, it says there are no external authentication services configured. What made that? That's this. Sign-in manager says, are there any other login providers? You can register login providers with ASP.NET, and it's all built in. What's nice about this is that there is an article set up to do that. So why don't we... Uh, rebels that we are, click on that and try to enable some Facebook login, shall we? Sure. You can also see that, by the way, if we go into st uh, startup, let's try this. Let's just explore this just briefly before we get started, actually. So here's our startup. We've got our app settings. That's cool. There's going to be this user secrets. They're not really secret in a sense of they're encrypted. They're no. just not in the current folder. They're not in the current folder. They're, they're hidden so that you can't accidentally check them into GitHub. Right. So user secrets are meant so that you don't hurt yourself by right. checking in secret things, yeah. like the key that we're going to use to log into Facebook. Right. Okay. But it's they not are like not. We're going to publish that in a video that everybody's going to see. Right, exactly. You would never do that. No. So then we've got uh, our databases and entity framework, and we'll hear about that uh, a, little a little bit, bit later, later today. Yep. Okay. We've got some logging middleware that we'll learn about as well. But then we just have use identity. Mm -hmm. That's what we just did. We logged in as me, local database, local everything, worked great. That's identity. External authentication middleware will happen below. We're going to take this link here and uh, follow that. Okay, so here's our social logins. So what we need to do is go to Facebook to developers.facebook.apps. We'll use Facebook, but we could use Twitter or whatever. Okay. So I will go and add a new app. Okay. Add a website, and we'll call it the MVA app. Create a new Facebook ID. Category. Entertainment. I have no idea. Okay. This is fun. Select all the photos that show a lion. It's a nice watch. Hopefully, I am still a real person. All right. They're telling us about our Facebook SDK. I don't need the quick start. Tell us about your website, right? So where is our website? We're going to skip some of this stuff because all I really care about is the fact that I'm on localhost at this point. I wonder if they'll care. Localhost. Right. Some of those things that you're skipping are things to configure so that when folks visit you, the application on Facebook and they learn exactly. about the application there, it's information to give them context on Facebook. Exactly. It all, uh, all. What I really need to get this done is I need my app ID and my app secret. The problem is Facebook changes their UI every 20 minutes. So you don't always get the same stuff that you expect. So here's my app ID. It, okay. It's also in the uh, header there on that page. Ah, excellent. Click to copy. I'll put that. Thank you. We'll put that in the in Notepad. And then our app secret. Ooh, is there? So I'm going to get both of these things. Secret. And then the app ID. This can be revoked later. That's why you re you generate an app. You can say, well, that app went rogue, so someone someone compromised it. I'm going to revoke that. Then people would no longer be able to log yep. in with uh, with Facebook. Okay. And then we can actually see login users with people using Facebook login. So that'll be useful. Cool. So we made a note of our app ID and our app secret, and then we can add in our uh, our site URL. Now, the secret management, right? We have to get this secret manager tool. We should probably already have that uh, on this particular application. Let's give it a try. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
open up this particular folder and get the path because I want to know where this website is, right? And do I come out here to the, I like to call it the DOS box, but it's the command prompt, CD over into that location. Yeah. And remember the .NET command line. I should be able to say .NET user secrets. Okay. .NET's going to do some tidying up because I cleared my caches earlier. Mm. Yeah. So it's reconfiguring. It's repopulating my cache. Just takes one second. It's a local package cache. It doesn't have to happen very often. Let me do that again. .NET user secrets. So that is the user secrets uh, utility that is installed here. Where is that installed, right? Yeah, this is a tool that we, we really don't want to be used when we deploy. Mm -hmm. Right, it's not a dependency, right. it's a tool. So it's a thing we would use like Entity Framework Migrations or Code Generation. These are things that are tools not shipped when you go to production. Yep. Okay. So we go over here, we have the User Secrets tool. Being able to type .NET User Secrets, the ability to be able to type that is predicated on that being there. If it wasn't there, we couldn't do that. Okay. So it says .NET User Secrets App ID, we'll go over to notebook, note, uh, notepad rather. So would it look like this? All right, see? And then the app secret would look like this. I don't want to accidentally remove one of those no. characters. All right. So now, you can run those commands. We'll run these commands, exactly. To the secret store. Where is the secret store? It's like a spy hiding your where stuff. Is, where is the secret store, anyway? Actually, you can see the, this secret. If you go back to Visual Studio, okay. there's a neat trick here you can use to find it. If you right-click on Web Application, okay. there is a Manage User Secrets item down there. Holy man. Click that. Oh, my goodness. And now, there's oh. the items you just keyed in. Well, that's somehow less secret than I thought it would be. But check it out. Oh. There, you just moused over the tab, and there's the entire folder location of where this file lives. It's not in your application. It's hanging out in this GUID folder name. Right. Again, not the intention to encrypt it, not the intention no. to make it secure, but rather make it secret. It's, it's so you don't check it in. Yeah, you don't check it in. It's secret in that you as a developer own this information, and mm. it needs to be clear and available for you as a developer to be able to change and update later. Right. All right. So we've got, if it's in development, use secrets. Let's make sure that that's in there. This is in startup. We haven't got that, so we're in development mode. Actually, I think it's up in the constructor. Let's find out. Ah, pardon me. You're absolutely right. So that's part of configuration. So we grab our configuration from app settings. User secrets is a kind of, uh, of a kind of configuration. Yep. If it's not in development, we need to put those in a proper secret store. And there are things like Azure Key Vault, yes. other places for production secrets. And they may set up things with a PowerShell script so that they get loaded as environment variables there on line 34. Uh, and live environment variables would be totally appropriate if it wasn't super secret. Oh, yeah. You could go and use this in something like Azure and set it up as an environment variable, and then it would just be available. Yes. Excellent. The point is, don't put them in your code. Right. All right. So now, we're going to go and grab NuGet, and we're going to get the Microsoft ASP.NET ASP Core Facebook authentication package. Okay. Now, again, I can go and manually edit, but I also kind of like to use this the user interface? The user interface. It's just nice now. I, I, I kind of like it. I'm going back and forth. So here right. we go. Here's the core middleware for this. We'll go and say install. This is going to bring that package down for Facebook and then whatever additional stuff is required. You'll notice down here it's getting OAuth, which is a mm -hmm. dependency of uh, the Facebook. So it's grabbing those tools, grabbing those things that we need. And it's now done. Excellent. Okay, so remember how we had app.useIdentity. What we need to do is add those external authentication middlewares there. 
It's all about middleware. We're going to dig a little bit more into middleware in a little bit. There's using it, which mm -hmm. is what we're doing, and then yep. there's making it, which is what you're going to teach me about. Yeah, we're going to take a look at some interesting things you can do there. So I'll paste that in. Conveniently right next to the note. Yeah, how fun is that? So this string right there, we confirmed, is coming is the is the name value pair that you can find when you right click and say manage user secrets. It's that string. So then if I had Twitter or Steam or any other login provider, the secrets would show up there as well. And they just get passed in. Uh, in this case, Facebook auth, I'd have Twitter auth, and I'd have different things. If you have your own auth, you can write your own middleware. Yes. And participate in, mm -hmm. an, in identity. Okay. So now, let's go and run the thing and find out if Facebook authentication enlisted itself as an external login provider. Okay. So go and run. Fire it up. Million things could go wrong right now. Holding our breath. Well, this is the thing though. When you do demos, you don't try to do them so that they work. People think that when you create a demo, you write a demo, that you're intending for it to work on the first try. Right. I like things to break because sure. I think that that's a learning opportunity. Absolutely. Okay. So we see here, use another service to log on. And now Facebook is available. Before we do that and prove that it works, because we don't know yet that it works, let's make sure that we can confirm that we know what's happening. So I'm on account slash login, all right? And if you look right here, get external authentication schemes. I'm assuming now that there's one of those because yep. look, for each. And, and it generated our submit button. Generated our button. But look at this here. You see what says value? Log into your provider dot display name account, right? Yeah. That's this Very year. cool. It is nice. Let's give it a try. So check it out. We've automatically showed up over to my personal Facebook, and it says this app will, can, will get your profile and your email address. And this is really important. This doesn't let the app post to Facebook. Yeah. Uh, little details. Uh, those, those security uh, restrictions mm -hmm. that are defined there are so important that a lot of people overlook. They really do. They just click through. Yep. And this is nice. Facebook login isn't a Facebook app permissions because in the old days, it felt like anything could potentially post to Facebook. Right. But now, sometimes we just want to log in. Mm -hmm. So we'll say continue. And then look at that. It redirected because we had told Facebook the URL. It came back. Now, this is really interesting. Check this out. Associate your Facebook account. Let's see. I already have an account that we logged in on earlier. If I hit register, it says you've already taken. So that kind of sucks. <laughs> I'll put in another account. I should have logged into Facebook before. And now, there I am. Cool. Cool. Very cool. And this means that we can log in and out to this application without it seeing our password. See? I hit log off, hit log in, log in with Facebook, does the little bounce, and then I'm back. Yeah, th that little bounce is kind of important, right? There's there's actually several communications that are going on there back and forth. Actually, that's a great point. Facebook, our application, and the browser. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Let's look at that real quick. I'm just going to say uh, record network activity, and I'll hit log in. And then what I'm going to do is uh, remove images and CSS, and we'll just stick with uh, JavaScript and you know things that things that matter, not uh, the other stuff. Oops, JavaScript, if I want that, I want cross-site scripting, I want some JavaScript, I want some documents, I want some web services. And I'm going to say, log into Facebook. Oops. One of the things that's interesting, when you're trying to record traffic like this, you notice that it popped, it showed me, and then it cleared it. You have to go and say, preserve log. Don't clear the log on page reload. One of the little details that you just learn after time. Let's go ahead and log off, log in, Facebook. That was quick. Interestingly, I feel like it didn't do a good job of representing that because if you look down here, here's external login. 
it's 302 Here's Facebook OAuth. Right. With all my certificates and stuff, 302 Then it went local host sign in Facebook. So it went over to Facebook, got some stuff, jumped back over, gave me the result, 302 back to itself, and then launched the main mm -hmm. page. So you're right. There is a dance there. What feels like one click is like five. Right. It's just important to, to be aware of that as mm -hmm. you're programming these things. If you're expecting something else to happen in there, or if you want to try and manage that process, you don't have control of that. That's the security of your application. Yep, exactly. So that is uh, kind of an overview of identity login. We saw that we can have that identity stored in a local database. Yep. We can associate n number of external logins, in this case, Facebook. And it, if you follow those tutorials, and there's lots of great tutorials on docs.isp.net, things will mostly work. But when they don't, it's not a black box. It, it's not. There's ways to solve this. There's a number of other websites out there from other folks in the community that have written providers and written documentation about how to use those providers. Um, I particularly want to call out OAuth for ASP.net.com. Mm. Check that one out. There's all kinds of providers for many of these services that you use for other applications. Absolutely. And it's not just Facebook and Twitter. Nope. It's Windows Live. It's Steam. Steam. Uh, it's Orange. It's also anyone that has LinkedIn. OAuth, LinkedIn. Yes. You can have. So if your application needs a particular thing, there's either middleware that someone in the community has made, or because it's building on OAuth, ultimately you just have to figure out what the URL schemes yep. are. All right. Cool. So that is doing authentication. Uh, middleware. We'll take a short break and we'll come right back.